Hi folks, I'm Richard Friedman and welcome to my September 18th, 2021 political cartoon countdown for the, for the week. This week we have the six top cartoons based upon impressions on, on Twitter and we start with number six and work our way up to number one is what we do based on the reactions on Twitter. And as I said, also, I'd like to tell you, uh, as I said before in other videos, I always like to start off by introducing you to myself. I, I've been a, a math and algebra high school teacher and, uh, and I, got, I retired, got into doing political cartoons, been doing it for many years through a whole bunch of presidents. And for the last few years, I've been creating books of political cartoons. So uh, here is uh, another thing I would like to tell you about is I have a website, which is Richard's Books of Political Cartoons.com. Richard's has no apostrophe and no, and no spaces between the, uh, the site. Richard's Books of Political Cartoons.com. And if you go to that site, you can see all my books. And if you don't feel like buying a book, it's just like a political Disney world. You see all the cartoons that I've done over the years, and you could just browse through them and have a good time with no admission fee. So here we go. This is my latest book here, which is The Greatest 2021 Book of Political Cartoons, Edition 1 from January to June. Obviously, hopefully, but we're still around, and I'm still around, it will be in Edition 2. And here it is, the book the cover. I try to draw in all the, the political figures that we, we, we see on, interacting all the time. There's the capital in the background. Okay, I'm not gonna go through this because you can, if you wanna see my up to the moment cartoons, you can go to Twitter and on the Bronx cartoonist, you can look that up and see all the cartoons that are here. Bronx cartoonist, handle RJF cartoons on Twitter and it's there. And I always say these books, aside from being funny and informative, it's like to have, it's having a, uh, a basically an encyclopedia of history that you can always refer to because it's dated, the cartoons are dated, and you get an introduction as to what happened that triggered the cartoon. So, there it is. Front, and there's the back. And, okay, now what I always also like to do is take you back in time to what was happening a year ago, a year or two, sometimes three years ago. This week, uh, it, it's out of this book here. This is the 2020 book that was in for an entire year. This book encompassed the whole year of 2020. The greatest 2020 book of political cartoons on issues of the Donald J. Trump presidency. And uh, today we have, I picked out a cartoon from September 14, 2020, just about a year ago. And here we, we're talking about California wildfires still a year ago. So here, this is, this is what was happening then. There's former President Trump. Okay, I'll, I'll kind of read this to you. Trump, Trump repeats claim bad forest management has caused California's wildfires. Nothing to do with global warming or nothing like that. It's bad management, you know? Bad management. They don't, they don't put enough fire hydrants in the, in the forests. So that's why we're having that. We need fire hydrants all around to, to put out the fires when they start, you know? Anyway, so here, here, here goes. Nothing to do with global warming. Global, so here, tr Trump repeats claim. Bad forest management has caused California's wildfires, saying the key to fighting fires is forest management. It is about forest management. Please remember the words. Very simple, forest management. 
amid California's governor says while surveying fire zones, the debate is now over in terms of climate change. This is a, this is a climate damn emergency. That was September 14th. So here, okay, I'm gonna bring it in here. So here is former President Trump visiting the fires out there in California. Okay, and here we have Trump during California visit blames the forest management for wildfires and says California should take lessons from Finland, a country with 57 million acres of forest and does lots of raking, according to its president, as Trump imagines. So it's a, also a raking situation, okay? That the, the, the management needs to ma manage their forest raking. And that's what he's basically saying here that it's the management and they have to be re responsible rakers of the forest. So that's what he's basically saying. So here we go. And here is former President Trump saying, poor forest management is to blame for these massive wildfires. Countries like Finland spend a lot of time raking to prevent similar disasters. They even have a raking hotline. So they don't, this is what, a raking hotline. So I kind of just injected that here. And here's a raking hotline, answering phones, you see? And he's got a rake up there on his desk, you see? And that's the raking hotline specialist in Finland, the raking hotline. So anybody who calls up and says some part of the forest needs to be raked, they call him and he sends out the rakers to rake the forest in Finland. According basically expanding what former President Trump said back a year ago. There's, there's the rake on, the, on his desk, he's, and there's he's got the telephone, he's answering the phone, raking hotline, can I help you? And there he is in the middle, there's a far too far, there's two trees that he's surrounded by, and he's there, okay? The raking hotline from, in Finland. That's why they have less forest fires. Okay, okay, so that was a 2020 book. Now I'm just gonna introduce you to, this was my, in 2019 I did two books, edition one like I did in 2021 this year, and that was this, this book here. You can see. There's a constitution in front of the book. I, used, I thought that'd be appropriate. Okay. There. This was edition two from that same year with the White House in the background. There you go. And here was my first book, which went from basically two, 26, two, from the, the debates of the 2016 election through the first year of four. So it was, the title was The Greatest Book of Political Cartoons on the Trump Presidency with a Flashback to the Democrat and Republican Candidates of 2016. So this one right up through from then to 2018. So it's a, it's a larger book. Anyway, that's the book there. I refer to this a lot, this book, more than any other book, because things that seem to have happened then seem to be happening again now many different, in different ways. So I'm always referring to this, these books, this book in particular. Okay, okay, let's get to the countdown. Okay. Numero seis de la semana, number six. A very appropriate cartoon here. Okay, there we have a, a, a terrorist training camp here. Okay. 
Oh, okay. We have the terrorist training camp. And then we have a chimpanzee parachuting down to, with the camera. There's the camera. Okay. There's the camera. And we have the, uh, the terrorist training camp. And he's take, taking a picture. This is our new intelligence. This is like, instead of boots on the ground, we have chimps on the, chimps on the ground. We can't have boots on the ground anymore. And we saw what happened with the drone strike. Not to make a joke out of that's no joke, but I'm just saying here that we can't, I don't think, I think we have to go beyond the drone and get some more uh, uh, surveillance of some sort. So this was, would be some surveillance we could get if we don't want to have uh, boots on the ground, we could have chimps on the ground with cameras and they'd be floating around Afghanistan taking pictures. See here, no mistake in a picture, you know. Of course, they'd be trained. They'd have to go to chimp camp, I guess you'd call it <laughs> chimp camp. You know, <laughs> to train how to how to work a camera and all that business. You know, there it goes. And this this cartoon reads as follows: an over the horizon flashback, because this was done a couple of few weeks ago, and I brought it up to date based upon what the tragedy that happened in Afghanistan with those people being killed and children and over what, and they all they do is carrying water canisters, you know? So, see those machines, they can't tell the difference between a bomb and a water canister. You got, you got a picture and you see, and you see that, nobody might, a bomb expert would not, explosive expert would not think, would say, oh, uh, somebody in the military would say, oh, those, those water canisters. You know, but but a machine you got flying above, it's just it's it's like Westworld, you know, with your Brenner when he's walking around, uh, you know, it, it's it's a machine basically. It's gone. It's gone. It's just gone. It's gone. We're going to do what it's going to do, in terms of being programmed. Uh, your Brenner broke the program out there in Westworld, but it, it's, it's the same kind of a, a way of thinking. It's a machine that's taken over the judgment of uh, of man, and when you have that. Anything is possible, you know? And uh, so here's that. So an over the horizon flashback, given the US has admitted that a drone strike in Kabul, in Kabul days before its military pullout killed 10 innocent people in the, tw in the 29 August strike. And President Biden had hailed the strike as evidence of our quote, over the horizon capability. Below a possible reorganization, this is President Trump, uh, Biden's own words, he, he was calling for a reorganization of our counterterrorism capabilities in the region. So this would be a, a new reorganization that would work, you know, that you would be using, you know, maybe in, in, in working with the drones, you know, getting the pictures. First we get the pictures, then we, then we somehow translate it into the intelligence of the drone to be able to recognize the picture of, of, of what they from, from the, and the real thing, you know, because if this is going to, this is going to happen again for sure. I mean, if, if we don't do something different than that, you know, and then we, we still had some people on the ground. We, we're still there. Imagine now we're going to be way out or gone, be gone. And we have to go, we have to go all the way across the world to, to, for our bases, you know, in Qatar, we have to go to Qatar. To have bases, and of course, our people get mad at us, uh, or, or something like that. Then goodbye, guitar, you know. So I don't know what to say. Pretty soon, the, the drones will be will be taken off from uh, from the, from uh, from the United States. So here we here we here we go. So that was that. The terrorist and the, and the chimp takes snaps the photo. Hail and sends it back to the drone, so the drone knows what to look for. Doesn't doesn't kill people. And gets gets the tar hit and gets the target of what they're supposed to be doing. You know. So anyway, the idea is to protect America, but not to make more enemies by killing innocent people. That's basically should be the strategy. Okay, now, here we have 
interesting cartoon. Numero Cinco de la Semana, number five. Numero five, number five. And here we have former Vice President Mike Pence, the reluctant savior of America's democracy. Now, they were out, there's no question, they were out to hang on January 6th, that day they were out to get Pence, they were out to hang the guy for, 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 for ratifying the, uh, the Electoral College vote, which was his constitutional responsibility, and he was more or less uh, a, uh, like uh, in there on automatic pilot doing what he had to do. He had no input into that whatsoever. You know, he was more of a conduit just to communicate, to sanction it, to, to ratify it, and that was it, you know? So, it was all ceremonial. It was a ceremonial function, you know? Sort of like, sort of like the guy who, or the lady who crowns Miss America, you know? And then he, the, the guy who works, plays, spends all year rehearsing to put the crown on Miss America, all of a sudden says, and everybody's out there, and then they go, Miss America, and then here comes the crown. The guy goes, oh, I don't want to give, I don't want to give the crown to this lady. I don't believe she won the, the contest. I'm going to give it to this lady over there, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah, she's going to get the crown. That's what it would be like, you know. <laughs> I'm not giving her the crown. Here she comes, Miss, uh, uh, forget the whole, forget the whole thing. That lady over there getting the crown, I'm giving her the crown. She don't get the crown, you know. I like her. You know, I'll take this gal out on a date, maybe to a movie, but that one's getting the crown. <laughs> you know, all that kind of thing. That's what that's what Pence would be doing. You know, basically. You know. You know, he might even go out to a movie with former President Trump to celebrate. You know, <laughs> you know. So anyway, anyway, former Vice President Mike Pence, the reluctant savior of America's democracy, given ahead of his ratifying the Electoral College count in Congress on January 6, Pence under great pressure from former President Trump, sought advice from former Vice President Dan Quayle, of all people, Dan Quayle, <laughs> Dan Quayle, you know, okay, on how to address Trump wanting him to overturn the 2020 election. Oh man, Dan Quayle was, many few years ago, he was after Murphy Brown, you know, talking about what's happening today with abortions and everything, you know. Dan Quayle was right in, in line then when, with, uh, with what's going on today, you know, on the opposite side of the fence, in a way, saying, well, he wanted to, he wanted to file charges against Mur Murphy Brown, who was just a TV actress. You know, not, not, I'm saying he didn't want to try, but he talked like he did. Put it this way, he didn't want to file charges against her. He talked like he did, like Murphy Brown was a real person, uh, you know? It was just a, a character on TV. Can I think it was Candice Bergen who played Murphy Brown, and she was like a, like a talk, like a young Maud type of thing, a real uh, lit woman's lit thing, you know, a, a young Maud, you know, <laughs> Murphy Brown, you know. So he probably would have gone after Maud, Maud but she was, she was kind of <laughs> over the hill about the, in those days, you know. And so anyway, so, uh, so anyway, so here is, here is, uh, here is that. So uh, from Dan Quell on how to address Trump wanting him to overturn the 2020 election, reportedly Quell advised Mike, you have no flexibility, Mike, on this. None. Zero. Forget it. Below Pence turned. Turn, you know, has nobody to go to. He's gone to the, he wants to, all his, you know, Republican allies. And I mean, the Republican people in, who are not law, law, knowledgeable of the law, and will probably support tr President Trump. And they probably all told him the same thing, that, Mike, you, you, you're just a ceremonial. Your, your, your idea is again to put the crown. You know, the idea is not to see who gets the crown. Uh, you know, the, like the Miss America analogy. I don't mean like royalty. You know. So anyway, so so here Pence, he he's left with nobody else. So he turns to Zoltar. Zoltar, if you remember the commercials from Liberty Mutual commercials, Zoltar, why pay more for what you don't pay more for what you you, you don't need. You know. <laughs> Why pay more? And he customizes your Zolta, Liberty customizes your uh, real estate policy so you don't pay more for what you don't need. That's the theme. So, and Zolta would confront people, would go to Zolta, and, he, and this is what he basically would say to them. So, so anyway, so Pence in this cartoon goes to Zolta for advice. He's the last person he has, a fortune teller Zolta. Zolta. 
Speak your words of wisdom. You are my last hope ahead of the January 6th election results ratification. How can I F dot blank 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 help President Donald Trump? Because uh, former President uh, Mike Pence was really wanted to help Mike, uh, help Trump. He really was in there. He was going to do all he can under the umbrella of the Constitution, but he wasn't going to go to jail or, or be disgraced to the point where he could never run again for president, for, for the presidency. So he might be trying to run now, starting beginning. Of, uh, so that would put him out of way off or in the outer limits if he ever would have done something that was unconstitutional. But if it had been constitutional, to say, well, I think we need a recount based upon this or that and this and that. The president such and such back in 1802, he did the same thing, and he and we had a little, then then he knew, well, okay, let's do it. But but there was nothing like that on the books, and there would have been something like that on the books had had he had he done it, you know. So it's a it's it's saved, that's how it saved American democracy, because that president would have been would have been a, like a, a cancer on American democracy, for sure. So anyway, so here's Zoltar. Zoltar retorts in, in his answer. Here's Zoltar responding. And Zoltar, Mr. Vice President, Zoltar give customized advice. First, ratify the vote on January 6th. Then Zoltar help you find new jobs with Liberty Mutual Insurance, flying helicopter over highways, to locate its customers who need to only pay for what they need. My advice to you, they only pay for what you need. Don't, don't get into this because you don't need to pay for this that you don't need if you want to run for president someday. You know, so that's basically it. If you see the latest commercial, they, they have uh, this guy who's doing all these uh, commercials now. Uh, I think his name is Doug, and he's flying a helicopter and he zooms down on a, on a car that's a Liberty Mutual customer and tries to analyze what kind of uh, policy they need and they may be paying too much money. And uh, that's kind of the latest commercial from Liberty Mutual, the helicopter commercial. So that's where I got the idea to do that, you know. So here's Zoltar giving the advice. And here is former VP Mike Pence approaching Zoltar. Okay. Well, that was numero, numero cuatro de la semana, number four of the week. Now, here we have, again, going back to uh, the Texas law, the Texas abortion law on uh, basically the, uh, the bounty hunters. You know, could you imagine, like Dodge City, going back, Dodge City, they had bounty hunters out in the Wild West. They had, they had bounty hunters in those days, and that was legal, you know. These guys, they bring in some dead or alive. That's all they used to say, wanted dead or alive, you know, because if you got brought them back alive, you got such and you probably, I don't know if there was a difference whether the guy was alive or dead. I think it was dead or alive, so you got the same amount of money, but that's what bounty hunters used to do. And then you'd be the reward down on the bottom, you know, and bounty hunters would go out there. So they may be doing that in Texas, putting out for guys helping people with abortions, putting out wanted, you know, signs, wanted, $5,000, uh, well, here it's $10,000, okay, so $10,000 reward, you know. But you don't go through the state, you go through the individuals have the right to sue, and if they, and if they win, they get the $10,000, or sue the individual, they can sue the individual for $10,000, you know, so... Anyway, here, here it goes. Here's the cartoon right here. And here you have, you have two bounty hunters. And then the, these two guys here, this is a guy, in, in, these, these are Uber drivers. Here's an Uber driver. And here is another Uber driver. And they are, there's a Volkswagen, that's a Toyota. It's a Volkswagen, this way, there's a, there's a Toyota. And there's the Volkswagen, 
the thing. Yeah. This is, they say, a, Vol a, Toyota, a Toyota Corolla, and say this is a Volkswagen Jetta here. And they're Uber drivers, okay? And they le just left off people at a uh, Planned Parenthood. Ladies off at a Planned Parenthood, okay? And here we have, so I'll give you the, and here's the Planned Parenthood place, okay? And here come the two bounty hunters with the lasso, ready to get them. You see they have the, the, sh the star there. They've been deputized as bounty hunters, okay? They're ready to go. That's like the Ponderosa's theme from, uh, from Bonanza. <laughs> okay, so here we go. A scenario that could have played out had a Texas state judge not issued an injunction. That's to stop. Injunction means to stop an injunction against anti-abortion abortion group on enforcing new law and stopping them from filing a lawsuit against Planned Parenthood for any potential violation of the law that effective, effectively bans most abortions in Texas. Below the aspect of the law, the new law, that would deputize private citizens, quote, to serve as bounty hunters authorized to recover at least $10,000 per claim from individuals who facilitated, make it easy for some, or, or helped in any way, woman's abortion, woman get an abortion. So here you have these two guys, these two Uber drivers who drop ladies off at Planned Parenthood, at parent, Planned Parenthood, okay? And then they just drop them off, and here come the bounty hunters. Dun, 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 dun. All right, <laughs> okay, all right. That's enough of that one. That's enough of Bonanza. I used to love that show. That was on like about 9 o'clock on Sunday nights. I always watched that show. And then when they, when they came out in color, when they started making those color, when, when it became color, uh, boy, that was really something. You know, because up to them, you were watching it in black and white. You know, so then you see the Ponderosa in color. Wow. To me, that was like a, that was true. Wow. So anyway, so here, here they go. And here they're talking to each other. And they go, I'll bring in this Uber driver in the Toyota. You get the VW guy who also dropped off a woman here. And then he says, this guy says here, he says, OK, we better also call for a sheriff's posse to circle this joint, OK? So it's like, it's like the wow, you know, when they circle the wagon trains, you know, <laughs> and if you ever watch wagon train, when they, they circle the wagons, that's where I got the idea from, of circling, they're like the wild west, they're going to circle the Planned Parenthood with their horses and, 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 and really uh, nab anybody who comes near there, any Uber drivers or, or anybody facilitating somebody getting an abortion, they're going to... They're gonna they're gonna get their name and add information and take them to court and sue them for ten thousand dollars as bounty hunters, you know. So that was it. Okay, now oh, here we go. Now here comes Anthony Blinken, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. Okay. Now, in this cartoon, you have to, he says something. He says, I, I wrote what he said, word for word. And then I used a little deductive logic to put it together, like two plus two equal four. That's what I did here. So the words he said and logically deduced, logical deduction from what he said, what it amounts to, you know? The, like you'd say the real deal, you know, the real deal. This is what he said. This is what he said, and this is the real deal of what he's, he said. He's, he, what he, he, he really said what it amounts to. So a, tra a translation into the real deal, okay? So let me just read this introduction to you. Secretary of State Antony Blinken testifies before Senate hearing 
defending Biden administration's exit from Afghanistan, pushing back on accusations that the State Department should have done more to help Americans and at-risk Afghans to be evacuated, blaming the previous administration for lacking a plan. He blamed the Trump administration. Below, Blinken's defense referring to the Trump administration's agreement with the Taliban and what Blinken said and what he, and what I should have said, what he said and what it amounts, what he said and what it amounts to, which is in the second paragraph. Okay, so here is Anthony Blinken. There he is. There he is. Okay. And he says, President, word for word, almost, I believe it is word for word. It, it, of course, it's taken out of context, but this is, this, is what, this is the essence of what he said. President Donald Trump had negotiated the withdrawal agreement with the Taliban. President Donald Trump negotiated this agreement with the Taliban. The Biden administration could not renegotiate because of threats from the group to resume killing. You know, the, the Taliban would start killing men again, and, they had, and that's what they were, were concerned about. We inherit a deadline. We did not inherit a plan. So he's saying two things here. He's saying, number one, we, we did not inherit a plan, so we didn't know what to do, and so we were handicapped from relying on or blaming, actually, the Trump administration. And then he's saying, because of the threats, that they would start killing people, or killing our, our Americans, so uh, military personnel. So if you put those two, th those two things together, didn't have a plan, didn't, didn't, we were left without a plan, we were helpless. Without President Trump's plan, we couldn't do anything. Didn't have a plan, and we didn't want any of our American, more American soldiers being killed. And we, and we never planned to protect them because former President Trump never left us a plan on how to protect our soldiers if we stayed longer than August 31st because we had no plan. So we, without a plan, our American soldiers could we couldn't, we, could, we didn't have the capability to make up our own plans. We had, and we're, so we, we, we were lost without President Trump. That's basically what he's saying. Without President Trump, we were, we were, we were, we were like somebody who uh, was uh, taking a, to, to, you know, going out for the first day to driving school, and then and then all of a sudden the guy bails out, his instructor bails out of the car and says, "You take over here. I got to use the restroom. Keep driving down the block and come back and pick me up." <laughs> you know, then the guy's the first day he's in the car. You know, so that's the kind of thing. That's the kind of thing that that uh, Blinken is, is hypothesizing here. As a, as, a, uh, as, a, as, a, as his reasoning. So here is what I wrote here, okay? President Donald Trump did not leave us with a plan on how to defend Americans from Taliban threats if we acted to secure evacuations by extending our withdrawal beyond August 31st. So there was no plan, no military plan on how to protect our men from the Taliban if we'd stay beyond October or August 31st. Okay? Therefore, we had to take the rosy road that the Taliban would not take the country so fast and the withdrawal would be safe. Very safe withdrawal, you know. So, that's it. You know, big difference from John, from John F. Kennedy with the, when, when, when he went on with the, uh, with the Bay of Pigs, when he went on television, I was just a little kid, but I watched him then, and I, I have a little bit of a memory, and he, he, uh, he felt remorse, and he said, you know, he, you, you felt that he understood the gravity of the mistake that was made. You felt that he, 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 was, he was sincere, and, 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 and I mean, he, was, he understood the gravity of admitting uh, of, a, of, a mis of the mistake that was made with uh, those uh, uh, Cuban uh, men who, uh, in the flying machine, in their planes, boats, whatever, who got caught up in this thing, you know, without any support that was promised to them and so and so, whatever. And he understood 
the gravity of, uh, he didn't try to do a song and dance, you know, around the thing. I mean, that, that's a contrast, you know, if you go back and you look at that uh, on, on, on YouTube and go back to that, it's a difference, you know. You know, it's, well, you decide, I don't like to, I always say this, I always like you to decide, you decide if this was the right approach or not. I just give you the facts and just a little tinge of my thoughts there, but you decide. It's up to you to decide. So, I'll leave it up to that. Now we're getting close. This was a, uh, this was former President Trump on 9-11, decided that the way to commemorate 9-11, a good way would be to kind of like uh, do a commentary on a boxing match, you know? So he went out there with his red, I don't know if he had the red gloves, but I have, you know? And there he was, uh, there he is here. This is um, Evander Holyfield, and here, and the other guy was Vitor Belfort. Okay, this is Vitor and Evander in the ring. Warrior, there's the warrior, he has a warrior belt on. And he is former President Trump on the 20th anniversary of 9-11 out there. Trump 2024, there he is in the ring. This was before, before he commentated on the fight. This was ahead, maybe a day ahead of it, or a rehearsal or something like that on that day or something like that. So I got him in the ring. Okay, Trump in the ring with Evander Holyfield and Vito Bel Belfort ahead of the former president's pay-per-view ringside commentary on their casino boxing match that on the commemoration of the 20th anniversary of September 11th. So I did this on September 10th. There he is. There he is. There is. I'm the greatest, you know. I am, I am the greatest. <laughs> Trump 2024. Okay, folks, well, we, we made it down to numero uno de la semana, number one of the week. This is number one of the week. By nothing even came close. And here is former President Trump again. And I'm not going to name these characters because I picked them, I drew them, not to, not to pick them out and to, and, to, and to just, you know, exhibit them just to say, you know, had anything against any one of them. It was because, basically, they're the most recognizable people that you would recognize to make the cartoon. There are many other Republicans who said probably is bad, or, or I mean, but who said the same type of thing, okay, uh, about how to handle this, uh, with this uh, General Milley, Mark Milley, uh, Joint Chiefs, head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. So, so I have my own thoughts on that, and I'm not going to get into it, but I'll, I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of, of an understanding of what, how I'm thinking when you know, we get into this. So here is basically, these people were picked. Here we have, there they are. I'll just get up close to see if you recognize them. I'm not, I don't want to, it, may, it makes it look like I'm picking them out. I'm, I'm only picking them because they're recognizable as people who've been on TV a lot.
and here's former President Trump, and he's asking them to raise their hand if you agree with a growing number of Republican lawmakers in Congress loyal to former President Trump, call for General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, to be held accountable for reportedly seeking to assure his Chinese counterpart that the U.S. would not start a nuclear war with them. And they was, the Chinese were getting very nervous over former President Trump, the, what was transpiring uh, after, after the, uh, the election, around the time of, of the election, they were, they were getting very uh, upset, you know, a after the immediately after the election, I believe. So they were getting very upset. A, sm a spokesman for Milley has argued that his actions were in keeping with his duties to maintain strategic stability. Okay, now, again, I say to you here, his, and he's asking, and here goes former President Trump in this cartoon. He's calling, he has the strings, and he's controlling these, uh, as I call them, trumpets. Like, after the Muppets, I call them the trumpets. <laughs> okay? So, trumpets. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Trumpets. General Milley is a dumb, this is what President Trump said. I would never inject this if he didn't say this. General Milley is a dumbass who may be guilty of treason for contacting China over his crazy fears that me, Donald J. Trump, might start a nuclear war with them. And then, he, and then former Trump, former President Trump, Trump then goes on to say, Trumpets, raise your hand if you agree with me. And so he, he has the, his strings there and he pulls on their hands and they all, all their hands go up. Okay, like I said, these people, I chose them because they're most recognizable. I could have, I could have drawn uh, Senator, Senator John Kennedy, right? Nobody would know who the heck he is. I don't know, he's been so popular on television. John Kennedy, uh, Senator John Kennedy, Republican, loyalist to, for, to former President Trump, said that basically they uh, smoked turkey, that General Milley should be uh, smoked turkey if it's true that he did contact the Chinese, that he should be, uh, he should be smoked turkey. I mean, gone, gone, <laughs> like smoked turkey, but smoke, smoked turkey, you know? So he, so Senator John Kennedy said that. So I, I would say to, to Senator John Kennedy and, and these folks here, I would say to them, look, read the book Failsafe. That was published right after the, uh, the Cuban Missile pri uh, Crisis in, in, around the end of October. The, the Cuban Missile uh, Crisis was in early October of 1962. This book, Failsafe, came out in the end of October of that same year, 1962. And it was about, the, the, when, during the Cold War we were having with the Russians, the, then it was the, the Soviet Union. The, 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 so, so what happened here was basically the, the, these uh, jet fighters, these U.S. jet fighters, they have, uh, it was called fail-safe, and they have fail-safe boxes, which they get their orders from, on these fail-safe boxes they're called. And what happened was that by mistake, an order went out to launch a nuclear attack on the Soviet Union in Moscow to, to focus, focus a nuclear attack on, on Moscow. This was, this was a, a book, Failsafe, from 1962, published in 1962. And there was a movie made about that, too. Henry Fonda played the President of the United States. So, in that movie, I remember. So, anyway, so what happens is that Henry Fonda, the President of the United States, playing that, he decides. He, 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 they found out that this was a mistake, that somehow this was communicated to these fighter pilots to attack the Soviet Union then. And then he calls all the planes back and everything looks like it's going good, except this one plane didn't, said, I'm not, I'm not listening to this. this, this is bullshit, I'm going in there. And he goes in, he bombs Moscow. And then the, uh, the President of the United States, Henry, played by Henry Fonda, Besides, well, we we got to save the world from a nuclear disaster, from a nuclear war, complete, complete, uh, you know, total, 
total destruction. So he says, I'm going to bomb a major city of the United States. And it turns out his wife was in one in the city that he had chose to, to attack. And, and that's how the movie went on. So that was the movie. But you, here you have, you could have a fail safe in reverse where, where the Chinese go up and, and they set, put up their fighters out there and then one guy gets through. You know, if, if the Chinese feel uh, that uh, President, former President Trump has so much animosity and he, he was talking uh, about the, the, the virus, blaming them. They, I mean, it is true. It is true this came out of a, a laboratory and everything like that in China, or, or they think it and they have, or, or maybe it came from, uh, from, uh, from, from an animal, a bat or something like that. They really haven't made a decision yet. But, you know, so uh, I know President Trump, as I recall from another cartoon, <laughs> Did, did feel that he had proof that it came from the laboratory. So if, if it came from the laboratory, it has ramifications that the Chinese that instigated this and planned this type of thing. It has, that would, it would be more in line with that kind of thinking. And President, former President Trump, President Trump said he had, he had proof, but there was still no proof. To this day, there's no proof either way. But it, it could be this, it could be that. So with that, they hear this stuff, and, and then they hear the stuff going on. They, they, they got the message, they felt threatened that they were under threat. And if somebody, you know, gets a, a mistake that says this or that, and, they, and then they go up there, and then one guy gets through, you got a nuclear war. So if, if Milley is, is guilty of anything, I mean, he's not guilty in my, in my I have to say this in my view, he, but, but if, if, he, if he, uh, he was just trying to to because the, the you can't say we have to look to the Constitution of the United States to see who who who, who can do this and this and that in a situation like that, we're looking up the Constitution while we're we're getting bombed by China and launching our counter missiles and everybody's looking at the Constitution and arguing over the Constitution while the whole world's going up flames. I mean that don't make too much sense to me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, because uh, a piece of parchment ain't going to save you from a nuclear bomb, you know. You can't wrap your head in, in the Constitution and say I got this Constitution here protecting me. It ain't going to work, you know. So, it reminds me of the 1950s when they used to tell you, and the teacher would be lecturing up, and they say take cover. We used to go onto our desk and we used to hang on the desk and look up waiting for the bombs to drop or something like that like the desk would protect us from a nuclear bomb in the 50s take and all the time the teacher would be late they said showing us long division or multiplication or something and all of a sudden she said take cover everybody get underneath the desk and we would think what's going on here we get underneath our desk you know be even banging your head a little bit get underneath there and you know, crouch down and waiting wait so so i'm just trying to make the point that you, 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 you know, the, uh, the same thing with democracy. The Constitution doesn't hold up our democracy. It's the people who have to be responsible that holds our democracy. Well, the Constitution is a blueprint on how to deal, to how to work, but if people can't work together and if people do things that are wrong and morally wrong, then what, what good is the Constitution, you know? And then you're saying, well, we, we have to follow the Constitution now <laughs> because we, we're going to get a nuclear bomb. We still, we still, we have to follow the Constitutional, and he didn't do this. It was only for him to, to communicate with this and that. And so I'm not going to go in, into a defense now. It's not my <laughs> position here to do a defense of General Milley. I'm just trying to give you the ramifications here. You take it and you think about it the way you want to think about it. I always say. So, uh, folks, I want to thank you very much for watching my political cartoon countdown today, and I wish you all the best, stay safe, and uh, I always say that, you know, use your mask when you have to, and uh, stay away from crowds unprotected, and do the best you can, and I always feel that better days are coming, and I always believe that. I believe it, and, uh, and just have faith, have faith, and take care of yourselves, and until next time, bye.